Hello, and welcome to a video presentation on equivalent fractions and decimals. Here's what you'll learn. How to write fractions as decimals, write decimals as fractions, and determine whether a decimal is terminating or repeating. Fractions are just division problems. So, when you divide the numerator of a fraction by its denominator, you end up with a decimal answer. The decimal answer you get is equivalent to the original fraction. As their names imply, terminating decimals are decimal numbers that come to an end. Numbers like 0 0.5 or 0 0.782. They terminate or end. Repeating decimals are numbers that don't come to an end, but repeat in the same pattern forever. For example, 0 0.222 where the 2 keeps repeating. That could also be written as 0 0.2 with a line above the repeating 2. 0 0.8333 where the 3's keep repeating can also be written as 0 0.83 with a line above just the 3 that keeps repeating. 0 0.454545 can also be written as 0 0.45 with a line above the repeating pattern of 45. In sports, a team's winning average is determined by taking the number of wins and dividing by the total number of games played. That's a fraction. Let's take a look at the winning averages in this table for Major League Baseball's American League West 2009 division. That division is comprised of the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, the Oakland Athletics, the Seattle Mariners, and the Texas Rangers. That year, the Los Angeles Angels won 97 of their games. They played 162 games that year. So as a fraction, their winnings are 97 out of 162 total games. Now that's a division problem. 97 divided by 162 will give us a decimal. And in sports, we round winning averages to the nearest thousandth. So 97 divided by 162 will give us a decimal of 0 0.599. The Oakland Athletics won 75 games that year out of their 162 game season. So that's a fraction of 75 over 162. Divide the two numbers to get a decimal of 0 0.463. The Seattle Mariners won 85 games that year out of the 162 games they played. That's a fraction of 85 over 162. Divide the numbers and we get a winning average of 0 0.525 in decimal form. The Texas Rangers won 87 games that year out of 162. That's a fraction of 87 over 162, which is a decimal of 0 0.537. Now let's look at some examples of writing fractions as decimals. Let's express three-fourths as a decimal and round to the nearest hundredth if necessary. Now since fractions are division problems, I'm going to set up the problem for division. I'm going to take three and divide it by four. Now four doesn't go into three, so we're going to go ahead and put a zero above the three to start our division and we'll put a decimal after the 3 and also a decimal after the 0 in our answer. I want to keep dividing, so I'm going to add another 0 after the 3. Now, how many times does 4 go into 30? 7 times. 4 times 7 is 28, so I'm going to subtract 28 from 30. I'll get a remainder of 2, and I want to keep dividing. So I'll add another 0 after the 3, and I'll bring that 0 down to my remainder of 2, making it 20. How many times does 4 go into 20? 5 times. 4 times 5 is exactly 20, in fact. And 20 minus 20 gives us 0. That means we're done dividing. Since our answer ended with the hundredths place value, we have no need to round. 3 quarters is exactly 0 0.75 as a decimal. Let's do another one. Let's express two-thirds as a decimal, again rounding to the nearest hundredth if necessary. Once again, fractions are division problems, so we'll set up the problem for division. Two divided by three 
And 3 does not go into 2, so we'll put a 0 above the 2, put our decimal point after the 2 and after the 0 in our answer so that we can keep dividing, add a 0 after the 2, and now how many times does 3 go into 20? 6 times. 3 times 6 is 18, so we'll subtract 18 from 20. That gives us a remainder of 2. I want to keep dividing, so I'll add another 0 after the 2 bring it down to my remainder and make that 2 a 20. And again, how many times does 3 go into 20? 6 times. 3 times 6 we know is 18, so we'll subtract 18 from 20, get another remainder of 2. Ah, I see a pattern here. Let's keep dividing though. Add another 0 after the 2, bring it down into our remainder to make that 20 again. How many times does 3 go into 20? 6 times. 3 times 6 is 18. Ah, uh, yes, there's definitely a pattern here. We have another remainder of 2. Now, it's apparent our answer is just going to keep repeating with 6's. We divide it, though, to the thousandths, the third decimal place, because I need to do that to determine if we round up the hundredths or the second decimal place. Are we going to leave it a 6 or turn it into a 7? The 6 in the third decimal place tells us we need to round the second 6 up to a 7. So our answer then becomes 0 0.67. Two thirds expressed as a decimal is 0 0.67. Now let's express this decimal, 0 0.5, as a fraction. And we want to put our fraction in simplest form. And writing decimals as fractions is easy. The digits after the decimal, in this case the 5, will become the numerator of our fraction. We're going to bring down all digits without the decimal. And in our problem we have just one digit, that's the 5. So let's bring the 5 down to start our problem. Now we have our numerator. And the denominator will be the place value of the digit that's farthest to the right in the decimals. Well, the digit farthest right this time is 5, and its place value in the decimal is tenths. So that means our denominator is going to be 10. So we have 5 over 10. The decimal 0 0.5 is 5 tenths, but we're not done because our fraction is not in simplest form. The numerator and denominator have a factor other than 1 in common. 5 will divide evenly into both numbers. So let's divide the top and the bottom by 5 to get our fraction in simplest form. Divide the top by 5, divide the bottom by 5. 5 divided by 5 makes our numerator now a 1. And 10 divided by 5 makes our denominator a 2. So 0 0.5 as a fraction in simplest form is one half. Let's do another example. Let's express 7.75 as a fraction in simplest form again. Now the number in our problem has a whole number portion, the 7. And it has a decimal portion of 75. The whole number 7 will remain a whole number in our answer. So let's just bring that number down as we start coming up with our answer. Now the digits in the decimal number will become the numerator of our fraction. The digits in the decimal are 75. So bring down all of those digits without the decimal. We'll bring the 75 down as the numerator. And the denominator will be the place value of the digit that's farthest to the right. In this case, the 5 is the digit farthest to the right. Its place value in the decimal is hundredths. So that means our denominator is going to be 100. 7.75 is 7 and 75 hundredths. But again, our fraction is not in simplest form. The numerator and denominator have a factor other than 1 in common. We can divide top and bottom by 25. Now the whole number 7 is going to be unaffected by reducing the fraction, so we'll just bring the 7 down into our answer. 
And then 75 divided by 25 is 3 for our numerator, while 100 divided by 25 is 4. So our numerator is going to become 4. And there you have it. 7.75 is 7 and 3 quarters. Congratulations! You've learned how to write fractions as decimals, write decimals as fractions, and determine whether a decimal is terminating or repeating.